do you like the world you live in today? Gusto niyo ba yung mundo na meron tayo today? Ako, hindi. And the reason is, yan, daming away, daming problema. So sometimes I cannot help but ask, why did God make us live in an imperfect world? You know, di ba, if He is God, hindi ba niya kayang ayusin lahat ng problema natin ngayon? Di ba, Bible tells us He's all-powerful. That means, kaya niyang baguhin lahat. He has the power to make things better. You know, recently, uh, may bagyong egay sa Luzon. And now when I was watching the news, you know, sa internet lawa, mami TV, sa, sa internet, I saw bagyo. Binabaha. Di ba, can you imagine, Benguet binabaha. Tapos, meron pa ako nakitang isang buong bahay na hulog. Because nakatayo siya sa side ng bundok. So, during the, during Typhoon Egay, may mga namatay, nawala ng negosyo, nasiraan ng ari-arian. And what is weird is, hindi lang yung mga taong hindi naniniwala kay God yung naapektuhan, even those who say, Kristiyano sila. So, ang tanong ko, why does God allow this? Why does God allow us to live in an imperfect world? However, as I thought about it, you know, kailangan yung ma-realize that God has nothing to do with the imperfection of this world. What do I mean? Can you turn your Bibles to Genesis chapter 1, verse 31? Alam mo, when God created the earth, Bible will tell us in Genesis chapter 1 that He created everything as good. Genesis chapter 1, verse 31. Basahin ko ng version ko. It says, Genesis 1, 31. God saw all that He had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. You will find a count of creation. Every time God would create a component of nature, at the end, Bible will say that God saw that what He created was good. But on the sixth day, when He created man, sabi niya, everything was very good. Alam nyo ba na the earth only became very good after God created man? Nung ginawa niya lahat, yung ibon, yung hayop, yung uh, dagat, sabi lang niya good job. But when he added man, all of a sudden, everything became very good. Ako, I like reading I, I like reading Psalm chapter 8, verses 4 to 6. Let me just read that. Sabi ng verse 6, What is man that you take thought of him? And the son of man that you care for him, yet you made him a little lower than God, and you crowned him with glory and majesty. You make him to rule over the works of your hand. You put all things under his feet. You know, God was so happy when he finally created man, because all of a sudden everything became very good. So, ang tanong ko. How can something be so good turn out to be very bad? The answer is found in Genesis chapter 6, verses 5 and 6. Okay, let me read my version now. Genesis 6, 5 and 6. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth and that every intent of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. Verse 6. The Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth and that he and he was grieved in his heart genesis chapter 6 explained that we are wicked by nature so that's the reason why mayroon marami tayong away however wag niyo lang tingnan yung kaaway niyo as wicked kasi sinabi lahat tayo wicked so therefore you all are, you are also wicked tayo lahat pero ang tanong ko, saan ang galing to? Bakit all of a sudden naging wicked ang tao? Di ba, we were created in God's image and likeness. How did we become so wicked? Genesis chapter 5, 2 and 3. Let me read my version na. Genesis 5, 2 and 3. He created them male and female, and He blessed them and named them man in the day when, he, when they were created. When Adam had lived 130 years, he became the father of a son in his own likeness, according to his image, and named him Seth. Tayo, lahat tayo, descendant tayo ni Adam. While man was created in God's image and likeness, we were born in the likeness of Adam. So I always say, no, 
We did not inherit the sin of Adam. We inherited his sinful nature. We are now of his image and of his likeness. So nung very evil na yung tao, God tried to blot out the wicked men during the time. So ginawa niya, he sent a great flood. He sent a great flood para maubos lahat ng tao. But he preserved one family, pamilya ni Noah. Kasi sabi ng Bible, si Noah was a righteous man, someone who walked with God. So Noah was okay. So sabi niya, God siguro inisip niya, since righteous si Noah, yung mga anak, magiging righteous din. After the flood, I want you to understand a very important promise in Genesis 8.21. Let me read my version. Ha? Genesis 8.21. The Lord smelled a suiting aroma and the Lord said to himself, I will never again curse the ground on account of man, for the intent of, his, of man's heart is evil from his youth. I will never again destroy every living thing as I have done. Ako, hindi ako naniniwala that God will come to destroy this earth because He made a promise, never again. Will the end come? I, I think so. But how will the topic? Sabi niya, He made a promise to Himself. He will not destroy the earth again. Okay, but anyway, yun lang alam ko. However, nung natapos yung flood, yung anak ni Noah, gumawa na naman ng kasalanan. So wickedness came back again, it continued hanggang sa araw na ito. So, but because man is naturally evil, I believe, tinanggap na lang ni God yun. Ang pabihaan natin yan, naturally na evil yan sila. However, ang belief ko, lahat ng sabi ko siya, this is an imperfect world. Ang belief ko, the imperfection is caused by man. Tayo. Okay? Like for example, what are the imperfections of this world? May mahirap. Merong inequality, may pinanganak na mayaman, may pinanganak na mahirap, merong nag-aaway, ayaw magpatawad. There's degradation of nature. Tapos there's political instability. Sino may gawa nito lahat? Oh, tayo. God never caused the imperfection. Tayo lang yan, gumawa. So, sabi ko sa inyo, finally, tinanggap na lang ni God na hindi na magbabago yung mundo because of all of the things we do. So what did God do in order for us to survive and thrive? Anong gustong gawin ni God para despite of the imperfection, okay pa rin tayo? So first, He set His Son to pay for the penalty of our sin. Tapos meron siyang ginagawa continually. Can you turn your Bibles to James chapter 1, 2-4? Okay, let me read my version na. James 1, 2-4. Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its perfect result, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. These verses tell us that God sends us trials, not to make us miserable, but to complete us. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Sabi niya, may dadating na trial. It will test your faith to complete you. Ano ibig sabihin to complete you? Ang belief ko today, God sends trial to send to teach you how to respond to the imperfection of the world around you. What do I mean? I'd like you to think about the person you hate the most. I want you to know that God sent that person to you not to make you miserable, but to teach you how to respond to people like them. Kasi maski mawala sila, may papalit doon. Di ba? Karamihan ng mga tao ngayon, ayo sa boss nila. So nag-resign, lumipat. Kamusta yung sunod ba na boss? Mas mabait? Pareho pa rin. Diba? Marami ngayon, naghihiwalay. Kasi ayaw na nila sa Mr. or Mrs. nila. Naghanap ng iba. Kamusta? Mas matino ba yun? Di ba? The reason why God sends those people to you, because nung dumating sila, Ano anong ano nangyari sa nung dumating yung taong na visit ka, lumabas ba yung maganda mong ugali? Karamihan hindi. Lumabas yung masama mong ugali. So pray mo that God would remove that person o baguhin ni God yung tao niya na yon. Wala naman nangyari, di ba? Kasi hindi naman din siya may problema siguro yung tao yung pero may problema ka rin. Hindi ka marunong mag-respond sa taong ganon. 
So, pinadala siya ni God to make you complete. Anong complete? Kasi, since nahirapan ka mag-respond sa ganong tao, pinadalan ka ng ganong tao to make you a better person. Now, kanina, yung tao, no, I want you now to think about mga problema mo ngayon. Katulad siguro ng kapitbahay na buwisit, kapamilya na nangiisa, katrabaho na masakit sa ulo, meron ka bang di pinagdadaan ng gano'n? Yung bang problema na somehow makes life difficult for you? Have you prayed for that God would deal with those things or remove them from your life? Kamusta? Tinanggal na ba niya? Hindi, no? Andun ba rin, no? So, ang tanong ko, if God is God, why would He not remove the problems around you? Ang rason, He wants to mature you and complete you. Now, how will those problems complete you? Kasi hindi naman problema yung problema mo eh. Ang problema, ikaw. Diba? Like for example, alam mo, the word perfect in Greek is teleios. Ang ibig sabihin, to mature. So God sends us trials to mature us. Hindi ibig sabihin na uh, uh, hindi ibig sabihin na walang mali sa sitwasyon. Ang gusto lang niya, marunong ka mag-respond kung merong mali. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng maturity. Maturity means, maski may mali, alam mo paano mag- Respond, what do I mean? Recently, may nag-message sa akin sa Facebook because of all these posts na kagagawa ni John T. May, no? mga controversial na posts. No? So anyway, merong nag, meron nag-message. Sabi niya, meron siyang close to 200,000 pesos na utang. Ang tanong niya sa akin, ano ba dapat niyang gawin? Bayaran? Or mag-invest muna siya para may makabayad. So sabi ko, dapat bayaran mo muna kasi mas malaki ang interest sa utang kaysa sa kita sa investment. But then sabi niya, yung utang na yon was accumulated by the pandemic. So sino may kasalanan ng utang niya? Yung pandemic. Di ba? I was telling them, the pandemic was teaching us to live simpler. Ano to live simpler? Kasi wala nang, wala nang kita, di bawasan mo yung gastos mo. Di ba? O hindi, maghanap ka pa ng trabaho. Kaso, during the pandemic, they were waiting for things to go back to normal. Yung, yung, yung gastos, patuloy. Di ba? I was very happy nga during the pandemic. Sabi ko, maraming tao makakatipid kasi sarado ang mall. And then sasabihin sa'yo, may Shopee naman tsaka Lazada eh. So nagtuloy pa rin, di ba? Nagtuloy pa rin. Imbis na pinasimplihan niya yung buhay niya, nag-accumulate siya ng, nag-accumulate siya ng utang during the pandemic. And ako, I always tell friends, the pandemic was very weird for me. Because I have friends who are very, very excited. Sabi niya, Dong, ganda, mabuti na lang. Nagkaroon ng pandemic, mas malaki kita ko. Yung iba, sabi, grabe tong pandemic na to, naghirap kami. So, ano problema during the pandemic? Hindi yung pandemic. Yung tao on how they responded to the pandemic. Merong umaman during the pandemic. Merong naghirap during the pandemic. The pandemic was an imperfection in creation. Pero some people took advantage of it by responding properly. Alam mo, God cannot perfect the world because man is naturally evil. So ang ginawa niya, He's been trying to perfect us by teaching us how to respond properly through the trials that we experience. Pero naisipin mo, no? Bakit hindi na lang ni God patayin lahat ng wicked na tao sa mundo? Di ba? Para tahimik na sana tayo. Alam mo ang sagot niyan? Kasi baka mapasama kayo eh. Diba? Kasi baka mapasama kayo. You think you're better than other people. Ano sabi ng Romans chapter 3, verse 10 and 11? Let me read my version. Na. Romans 10 and 11. There is none righteous, not even one. There is none who understand. There is none who seeks God. All of us sin at one point or another. You know, my struggle with forgiveness. Some people have a hard time really forgiving. 
So, ang tanong ko, bakit ikaw ba hindi kailangan patawaran, patawarin? However, sometimes we say, no, yung kasalanan ko, mas malit kaysa sa kanya. Totoo yun. Pero kasalanan pa rin naman yun, di ba? Kaya nga, do not pray that God will kill the person you hate. Pag mo sabihin, Lord, kill everybody, everybody wicked, baka maubos tayo lahat. Hindi ba, walang matira. Kasi when you hate your brother, what did Jesus said? You're a murderer. When you slander another person, ano slander yung siniraan mo? Sabi ni God, He will make you accountable for every word that comes out of your mouth. When you do not submit to authority, you oppose the Lord Himself. Diba? Hindi ka pumatay, hindi ka umutang, pero hindi ka submissive, you went against the Lord. So never pray that God will destroy all the wicked people on earth. Mauubos tayong lahat. Lahat tayo kasama. Pero minsan, no, ang tanang sagot, ang tanong niyan, but ang tagal gumalaw ni God, bakit God would not deal with the sin of people na alam mo na masama yung ginawa niya? Kaya minsan, pag natatagalan tayo kay God, what do we do? We take matters into our own hands. Tayo na ngayon ang nagpapani sa ibang tao. Can you turn your Bibles to 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9? Okay, let me read my version na. 2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slow about His promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. And ako, minsan feeling ko, kulang talaga natin grasya. Di ba, when people hurt us, gusto natin punishment kagad. Huwag mong pangunahan si God because God knows what He's doing. And besides, The same patience that He extends to others is the same patience He extends to you. Gusto natin God will be patient to us. Pero ayaw natin na He be patient to other people. You know, kulang natin grasya. Gusto natin justice. Most of your pain today are caused by the imperfection of the world. Your pain is caused by your imperfect spouse, imperfect friends. Imperfect family, imperfect government. This is all caused by this imperfection. Pero I need you to understand, God is using this imperfection to make you perfect. What do I mean? Can you turn your Bibles again to go back to James chapter 1? Let me just read that again. No? James chapter 1, 2 to 4. Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its perfect result so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Why does God send trial? Sabi niya, it's the testing of your faith. Sa isang exam, ano bang importante? Pag kumuha kayo ng isang examination, anong importante mangyari? Sa inyo, pumasa. Sa akin, hindi importante pumasa. Ang importante sa akin, malaman mo kung ano hindi mo alam. Kung masakay, hindi mo pa rin alam yung, yung, yung mali. Kung lang silbi, kasi the next time you take the exam, hindi mo pa rin siya alam. It's the same thing with trials. The most people, importante na when you go to trial, makasurvive ba lang tayo? Ako ang paniwala ko, when you go to trial, importante, malaman mo yung hindi mo alam. Hindi importante na you pray na, Lord, okay na ako, you deal with the other person because God wants you to deal with yourself. Ulitin ko ha, sa isang exam, hindi importante na pumasa ka. Importante na malaman mo ang hindi mo alam. Kasi pag hindi mo alam yung dapat mo malaman, uulit na naman. Pag dumating yung that, sunod na trial, ano mangyari? Ulit. Kaya nga, when people hop from one relationship to another, they're never happy. Bakit? Hindi na kinorek dito eh. Naghanap ng ibang mas mabait na boss. Will they ever find a better boss? No. Hindi mo kinorek eh. Pero pag inalam mo yung hindi mo alam, tapos binago mo, what happens? Di ba ba you become perfect? You become complete? You start to lack nothing? Kasi pinunuan mo na. So, ang problema sa mga tao ngayon, we look for perfect spouses, bosses, opportunity. So, naghahanap tayo ng perfect. Wala naman nun eh. 
di ba? Naghiwala yung mag-asawa, pagsunod, ganun pa rin. Because hindi problema yung kabila, ang problema tao, tayo. So God wants us to make our situation perfect by responding properly. How does God want us to respond to the trials he sends you? No? So kanina sa ko, no, think about the person you hate the most. Has that person made you a better person? Sometimes that person has continually made us miserable. Bakit hindi tayo nag-respond properly? Yung problema mo, has that made you a better person? Or a wiser man? Minsan hindi. Kasi pinipilit mo na sila magbago eh. Hindi ikaw. So how does God want us to respond to this imperfect world? Ako, there is only one word na uh, ako, adjust. What do I mean? One of the most important thing I learned during the pandemic is to adjust. Ano adjust? Adjust to the poor, imperfect people around you. Adjust to the imperfect events. What do I mean? Ano ibig sabihin? Maraming tao na depressed during the pandemic kasi they were hoping that things would go back to normal. Alam ba nyo, things never go back to normal. Every year, things will change. Every year, nothing goes back to normal because things change. Okay, so dapat tayo, kailangan tayo mag-adjust. Now, what's the greatest driver of change? It's the economy. It's business. Technologies will come. Bakit? Bakit na-create yung technology? To make business better. Okay? Pero some people believe technology will define our future. Hindi totoo yun. Ngayon, no? blockchain and Bitcoin, sabi lang, will change the future of money. I don't agree. It will just improve the way we transact business. But it will not change the way we do money. Kaso lang ngayon, no, take advantage ng ibang tao. They say Bitcoin is an investment. Anong Bitcoin is an investment? It's just a tool. Sabi na AI will define the future. It is not true. AI will make things easier. Ano ibig sabihin? AI will really replace call center workers. I really believe it will replace call center. Bakit? Para bumalik sa bundok, magtrabaho ulit sa farm. Kasi iniwala natin yung farm eh. And those are things that can be replaced. AI will make things easier. But AI will never replace man. Yun ang belief ko. Now, why do I say that? Bakit ko sinasabi, these things will never replace man? Because there's a promise in Jeremiah 6.16. Ano sabi ng Jeremiah 6.16? Jeremiah 6.16 says, For thus says the Lord, Stand by the way and see and ask for the ancient path, where the good way is and walk in it, and you will find rest for your soul. But they said, we will not walk in it. You know, recently may nagpadala sa akin ng comment in one of these posts, no? Sabi niya sa akin, masama yung turo mo, old school ka. Sabi niya, sabihan mo dun sa researcher mo, ayusin yung trabaho nila para makapag-share ka ng something updated. No? Sabi ko sa kanya, ang sinishare ko galing sa experience and sa success namin. Sabi ko yung research na yung walang silbi yan, pag walang proof of concept, alam niyo proof of concept, that it works. So some people are so excited knowing new things. Hindi naman na kayang gawin. Bible says, look for the ancient path. If you follow the ancient path, it is a good way. It will give you rest. You know, this technology are tools. They will never change the way things are done. Kaya nga sabi ni Solomon, nothing is new. The tools are new. The ancient path doesn't mean old. The ancient path is eternal and everlasting. Ibig sabihin, tama siya noon, tama siya ngayon, tama pa rin siya in the future. Ako, I call myself a traditionalist. Ano traditionalist? I believe in the old ways. I believe the old ways are still valid. No? Totoo naman, I am old school. Bakit? Because I believe the riches we enjoy today are produced by the past generation. We did not produce these riches. Ginawa to ng past generation. And, we te- and now we say, laos na sila. It's our time. So ako, I'm afraid for the next generation. Because of the foolishness of this generation. 
So to try to survive and thrive in this imperfect world, we need to adjust because people and events will never adjust to us. Tayo mag adjust When you wait for people to adjust to you, you will just become frustrated and depressed. And no, happy ako dun sa example ni Virgie about forgiveness. That's the reason why many people are depressed. They hold on to things that does not benefit them. Ayaw nila magpatawad, hindi mo lang nila naisip, kailangan din naman nila patawarin. Because none of you are perfect. Lahat kayo. Lahat tayo merong mali. Do you know that the great men in the past were good at adjusting? What do I mean? Si Abraham. Si Abraham, nag-away sila ng pamangkin niyang si Lot. Sabi niya, magkatian tayo ng lupa. Pinapili niya si Lot. Ano kinuha ni Lot? Pinakamagandang lupa. May tubig. Ang niiwan kay Abraham, walang kwentang lupa. And yet, many years after, Abraham became the richest man in the place. Si Joseph did not allow his circumstances to define him. When he became a slave, he became the best slave. Tapos nakulong. Di ba kayo, pag, pag nangyari sa inyo, anong gagawin nyo? Magagalit kayo. When he became a prisoner, he became the best prisoner. And because of that attitude, he became the only person who can save Egypt from seven years of famine. Kasi siya lang ang marunong makipagtrabaho sa slave and prisoner. So the great men in the past, si Jacob, si David, si Daniel, si Solomon, they were good at adjusting. They do not wait for things to become perfect. They use their character or their knowledge to make things perfect. Pero how do you adjust to your circumstances? Those great men use biblical principle para mag-adjust. What I mean? Can you turn your Bibles to Romans chapter 12? Romans 12, verse 2. Sabi ng Romans 12, 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. How do you train yourself to respond according to the ways of the Lord? Can I tell you something? Alam mo, you do not train yourself. God will train you. What do I mean? Ulitin ko ha. So, ang tanong ko, how do you train yourself to respond properly to the imperfections of the world? I realize you do not train yourself. God trains you. Can you turn your Bibles to Psalm chapter 119, verse 71? Psalm 119, verse 71. It is good for me that I was afflicted, that I may learn your statutes. Okay ba yun? Do you like being afflicted? Di man gudunta, di ba? Pero you will be afflicted. Now why does God afflict you? Sabi lang niya, to teach you his statutes. Pero what do we do? Di ba? What do we do? You know, I hope you will not be offended. Sometimes I get offended when you say, Kristiyano pa naman. Kasi we think we're much better than them. Pare-pareho lang naman tayo. You know, we're not better than any other people. Kasi tinawag mong Kristiyano, di ba? We're the same. Di ba? When we are afflicted, we do what the world will do. And that's the reason why we're in trouble. It is good for me that I was afflicted. That I may learn your statutes. That we may know that we too are sinners. Na nagkakamali din tayo. So therefore, ang dapat natin baguhin, sino? Tayo. So the things that made man evil is also his most powerful weapon. What made us evil? Free will. We decided to be wicked. However, we can use free will also to become perfect and complete. What do I mean? Can you turn your Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 30? Deuteronomy 30, babasahin natin 19 and 20. Deuteronomy 30, 19 and 20. Yeah. I call on heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. So choose life in order that you may live and you and your descendants by loving the Lord your God, by obeying His voice, by holding fast to Him 
for this is your life and the length of your days, that you may live in the land which the Lord swore to your father, to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, to give them. You know, when affliction comes, when troubles, tas na, walang, walang kinalaman yung ibang tao sa problema mo. When God allows affliction, it is just between you and the Lord. He wants you to be a better person. So when bad things come, stop looking for people to blame, for excuses to make. When they come, it's just between you and the Lord. So the greatest men in the past, they would take imperfect situation and make the necessary adjustment. So they would allow the situation to perfect them and then the situation becomes perfect also. Pero ang tanong, ano ang key? Ano ang key to making things perfect, your situation perfect? Ako, I'd like to go back to something I always teach. No? Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. Genesis 2, verse 15 reads, Then the Lord God took man and put him into the garden of Eden to cultivate and keep it. Now, why am I going to use this in trying to make your situation perfect? Foolish people wait for their circumstances to become perfect before they act. A wise person will take whatever they have and make it perfect. How? By cultivating and keeping it. They are by staying poor. You know, ako, I, I, I like the farmer's mindset. A farmer's mindset, a farmer will make things better than how he found it. Intindihan yun? A farmer's mindset, pangit yung sitwasyon, never mind. Tomorrow that will become better. Kasi ayusin ko yan. Many people, pag pangit yung sitwasyon, pangit to, iwanan na lang natin to. A farmer will, will, will look at the situation and say, tomorrow I'll make this better. It should adjust to your situation. However, oftentimes we're also put in, in situations where God wants us to make it better. So do I like the world we live in? I still don't because there's too many imperfections. However, God has put us in the world we live in to make it perfect by responding properly to the people the kasama natin and to the situation we are in. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we'd like to thank you for giving us a chance to hear from you, Lord. And Lord, I pray that all of us will recognize that you have put us where we are. Father, because you want us to be instruments, Lord, to make things better. Lord, sometimes we get frustrated with the people around us. And Father, when this happens, you reveal to us, Lord, our weaknesses and our flaws. Sana, Lord, allow us to experience these things. You will now cause us, Lord, to recognize that you have allowed all our trials and our affliction to make us better people. And so, Lord, it is my hope and my prayer that we will always adjust accordingly, Lord, to do what you want us to do so that we can impact the people around us. We are grateful, Lord, that you are there to remind us. We thank you for our time of worship. We are grateful, Lord, for the opportunity to fellowship. In Jesus' name we pray.